This video is a review of the Gibbs Energy and Helmholtz Energy chapter in the Chemical Thermodynamics and Kinetics playlist. So we start by looking at the Helmholtz Energy, which we define as the internal energy minus temperature times entropy. And then we go through and show through a derivation that if our system is at constant temperature and volume, then the Helmholtz energy has to decrease or stay the same in order for a process to obey the second law of thermodynamics and be spontaneous. In addition, the Helmholtz energy change during a process is equal to the maximum magnitude of mechanical work that we can perform during this process. We then define the Gibbs energy, which is internal energy minus temperature times entropy plus pressure times volume. And we show through similar derivations that at constant temperature and pressure, which is what most chemical processes occur at, that the Gibbs energy must stay the same or decrease in order for a chemical or physical process to be spontaneous. And the change in the Gibbs energy uh, during any process is equal to the maximum amount of non-mechanical work, non-pressure volume work that our system can perform. One example of non-mechanical work would be electrical work. We then define natural variables, which are the uh, variables that are most natural to express our different energy functions as a function of things like internal energy in terms of entropy and volume, enthalpy in terms of entropy and pressure, Helmholtz energy in terms of temperature and volume, as we saw, and Gibbs energy in terms of temperature and pressure. All of these are related by what are called Legendre transformations of these conjugate variables, S and T as well as V and P. Using these definitions, we can compute what are called Maxwell relations, which often allow us to relate something which is somewhat easy to calculate, like the derivative of volume with respect to temperature, to something which is much harder to calculate, like the derivative of entropy with respect to pressure. So a very useful tool in certain kinds of derivations where this, uh, this derivative would have been otherwise hard to solve without this equality. We can do things like correct the standard entropy of systems. So the standard state of gases is a hypothetical ideal gas at one bar of pressure. So most gases being non-ideal at 298 Kelvin and one bar, we can correct that uh, through a process we describe in that video where the difference between the non-ideal and ideal gas is related to the second virial coefficient and its derivative with respect to temperature. We can then develop the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation, where things like the uh, change in molar Gibbs energy with respect to pressure is equal to RT times the natural log of the final pressure divided by the initial pressure, or things like the partial derivative of the change in molar Gibbs energy over temperature with respect to temperature is equal to the negative change in molar enthalpy divided by temperature squared which will be useful for calculating the temperature dependence of equilibrium constants later on. We can define quantities like the fugacity, where the fugacity equals the pressure times this series of virial coefficients and pressure. So under ideal cases, the pressure and fugacity are the same, but whenever a gas is non-ideal, the fugacity is the analog to pressure, which allows our equations in terms of the Gibbs energy to be accurate for non-ideal gases as well. And we can define a quantity called the fugacity coefficient, which is the ratio of the fugacity and the pressure of a gas, where we can calculate that um, from an integral if we know the compressibility factor PV bar over RT as a function of pressure up to the given pressure that we have. Links to all of the individual videos in the on-screen annotations as well as in the description.